happy Super Bowl Saturday from out here in the middle of the Las Vegas desert. I could have legally slept out here last night, but personally, I just feel safer sleeping in town, not alone in the middle of nowhere. Honestly, finding stealth camping spots to sleep in your vehicle is really not as hard as it sounds, but on big event days for cities like this, some cities and establishments become more on guard. So being out in the middle of the desert where you can sleep anytime legally is definitely the ideal. However, my van really isn't built out right now for being off grid and it's still deep in the middle of the van build. So that makes this whole thing a bit more difficult as I'm still sleeping on the floor and living out of a suitcase, which after two months is honestly starting to get a bit old. However, I think the Super Bowl is a pretty good excuse for a break. But oh, by the way, Way, um, I forgot. There's a little confession. Um, I don't have tickets. I tried to find a way in, but volunteers were selected months ago and I can't afford to break the bank right now. But Vegas is still the place to be for the Super Bowl. From NFL events to tailgates, there were still so many things to live in the hype. So that is my plan for this weekend. To answer the question, is it worth attending the Super Bowl without tickets? Will it cost lots of money? What events can you go to on a budget? All these questions and more. Welcome to Whole Foods, probably not where you thought we were going, but one of the things about living in a very tall vehicle is I don't fit into most parking garages, especially on the Vegas Strip, where they're not really gonna be open parking lots. I'm going to leave the van here. I'm going to take an Uber, which is $20, which is a little nauseating. Regardless, I am super excited to be able to be a part of the Super Bowl here in Vegas. The average cost of a Super Bowl ticket in the past was about $6,680, but the lowest price of a ticket on resale after the championships this year was $8,500. This is also the first year the Super Bowl will be held here in Las Vegas since it started in 1967. The average hotel is $300 a night this week, so I am very, very thankful to have my van to make this trip more affordable. And the economic impact on Southern Nevada will be $1.1 billion. Many tailgates, events, and bars have tickets around $250 and higher to attend. But here in Vegas, that actually can be a little tricky to find a tailgate or bar without having a very long line or a hefty price tag. Luckily, I've been doing my research and have found a few different events in my budget. The first event I would have liked to attend was actually earlier in this week, but I wasn't in Vegas at the time. On Monday, they had media day, and it's about $30 to attend, and each team actually takes the stage for interviews by the media, and anyone can attend. You don't have to have a ticket to the Super Bowl. On our drive to the convention center, we actually passed Allegiant Stadium, where the Super Bowl is being held this year. The stadium cost $1.9 billion to build, and it is the second most expensive stadium in the NFL. But with only 65,000 seats, it's only the 28th highest capacity of all the stadiums, which probably accounts for some of the reason the tickets are so expensive this year. And in case you're watching this in the future, this is Super Bowl 58. It is the Chiefs versus the 49ers. So right now we are in Mandalay Bay where the NFL experience is being hosted. This is like a convention for the Super Bowl with football interactive games, historic memorabilia, autograph signings, overpriced merch. Tickets here were $25 during the week and $50 on the weekend. Walking in here, there was a lot of excitement and they start big with the Lombardi trophy on display with an hour line for taking pictures with the trophy. The trophy every year is made by Tiffany and company and named after former Packers coach Vince Lombardi. It weighs about seven pounds and costs about 50,000. But the Super Bowl rings, which are also on display here, for the set of about 150 for the winning team, it costs about 5 million. Walking over from there, they also have a dedicated space for the jerseys for each team, and they all have the number 24 for 2024. You can climb on them from the back to stick your head out the top and take a photo. There are lots of people just having fun, taking photos, all decked out in jerseys and celebrating. Walking into the next gigantic room, there are oversized helmets for each team. So basically now you have the entire ensemble, right? The uniforms, the helmets, the rings. Now you just need to be able to actually play football, right? So they have lots of games to test your skill. You can wait in line for about 30 to 45 minutes to try kicking a field goal, testing your grip strength on a football, lifting weights on a bench press, seeing how high you can jump on a vertical jump, and even an obstacle course. People even lined up to run a 40 yard dash, but still they lined up to run willingly. I am shook. I eventually did find one game I wanted to play, which was fully driven by the fact that I loved the prize you get for winning. So I lined up at the Lowe's booth with many other exciting hopefuls and quickly realized how bad the general population is at throwing a football, which had me kind of nervous by the time I got to the front. All I needed to do was throw a football through the O in home. Then the crowd goes wild. Who's on here? Thanks for having us. What a fun time. It's a pre-recorded crowd, but you know, still it feels good. Look at this bucket that I just won. 
look at it, look at it. Oh my god, I'm obsessed. <laughs> So I'll probably use it for the tools in my van, but a few of you, when I posted this on my Instagram story, were real quick with the van life ideas. Walking through some more of the exhibits, there were people showing how footballs were made, signed jerseys and historic memorabilia on display, and even different players up on stage right there signing autographs. You can even get your photo taken and edited onto a football trading card. Even crazier though, you can go up on stage and they would announce you as the first draft pick for your favorite team. Overall draft pick. And then I finally made it to the merch room and had my first sighting of anything Travis Kelsey, which was sad it took so long and honestly very surprising. They didn't even sell his jersey or anything with his number. Not that it really mattered since there was no way I would ever spend $85 on just a simple basic t-shirt. At the food stands here, just two chicken nuggets and fries were $18 and I personally am on a budget. So instead we went to this Uber pop-up because I saw people coming out of here with free food. And free is my favorite word. Wow, I'm, I'm probably sounding so broke and cheap in this video, but honestly, it's just that everything is overpriced these days. Anyway, I actually really loved this booth. I thought it was super fun and well done. Honestly, genius marketing. You had to download the app on your phone to participate and order what you wanted ahead of time on your phone. They gave out sodas and buffalo Cheetos and fun guacamole keychains. Super Bowl experience. This is the final match. Family Las Vegas. All right, so we need to find a place to sleep tonight. I overlander, check out the area, see what's up. I have seen a lot of videos and heard a lot of different things about people trying to stealth camp on the strip and getting bikes stolen off their RVs, people trying to break in in the middle of the night. So while that would be fun trying to stealth camp the Allegiant Stadium for the Super Bowl, I just think that, I mean, there's, there's no reason to put myself and my vehicle and my home at risk, obviously. All right, street parking, Planet Fitness. Worst sleep they ever had, let's go back to that. The worst sleep I ever had. I had tons of cars doing donuts until midnight, then a leaf blower man working until 3 a.m. Welcome to van life. Um, crack barrel could be a good option. This is a public service reminder to really pronounce the er at the end of cracker barrel. Otherwise, you're just saying crack barrel and that's, that's not good. I've stayed at some cracker barrels and liked it. Um, closed security guard was scary. That's gonna be a no, not this one. <laughs> okay, I know there's a Walmart down here um, that allows overnight parking and people have said nice things about it. So that's always good. This is actually looking super promising. There are some trucks. I don't see any other campers, which is surprising as it is the night before the Super Bowl. No shopping cart ceiling, shopping cart. I think we found our spot to stealth camp for the Super Bowl. Maybe over here? We're parked close to the bush, I don't know. <laughs> huh. There are coats there, which is kind of an indicator that a homeless person probably already has claimed the spot in the bushes. I don't want someone coming back for their jackets or staying in the bushes right next to me all night. So, we're just gonna skedaddle on out of here. I've been doing this for three years and I still have no idea what I'm doing. So, maybe that gives you hope. Maybe it doesn't give you hope. Maybe it gives you a realistic idea of what 
finding a place to sleep every single night when you live on the road is like. From here, the night is pretty simple. I put on a lot of warm layers and crawl into my current makeshift bed. And then every night before I go to sleep, as I freeze, I swear that I'll get back to van building ASAP so that I can stop living like this. It wasn't so bad at first, but all that optimism honestly is starting to wear off after two months of sleeping on the freezing floor. But in 13 days, I have an appointment for my electrical system. Then I will be toasty warm every night when I can finally turn on my Van Life Tech radiant heated floor. And I will be very happy not having to worry about having to live off of just my small anchor battery, though it does make an excellent nightstand and flashlight. In the morning, I did spend a few hours getting some work done on my computer before getting up. It was thankfully a very quiet night here at Walmart. Nothing crazy or loud sounds to wake me up, which is great because we do have a very big day ahead of us as it is Super Bowl Sunday. Honestly, the day does not go quite as I planned, but I'm glad I can show you an honest version of full-time travel, which is that some days are hits and some days are misses. I took a quick stop at Planet Fitness to take a shower, then went to the post office to pick up my dress for the day, but unfortunately there must have been a mix-up. That's one of the things about living in a van and getting packages without a basic address. This is much more likely to happen. So on the Amazon app, it says that my dress was delivered three days ago and it is not there. We're gonna have to make something up with what we got, but I don't think I own a lot of red clothes. Anyway, it's already 12 o'clock, so we're gonna get headed over to the Whole Foods to get an Uber to go back to the Las Vegas Strip for Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> I'm so excited. Travis Kelsey has to win. Okay, so the Uber is on its way right now. Our plan is to go to the Strip, go to one tailgate, walk down the Strip to another tailgate and watch the game there, and hopefully that will all work out. So the Uber dropped us off at the biggest tailgate here in Nevada. It's Guy Fieri's Flavortown tailgate, right here under the high roller off the Vegas Strip. It had live music from Diplo and Dustin Lynch and Flavor Flav, which I actually got dropped off right by the Uber, right as Flavor Flav was getting into his car to leave. And I may have almost gotten run over by the car, but that's a different story. So I got to see him, which was pretty cool. They had restaurant pop-ups from diners, drive-in and dives and lots of fun things, which I actually never ended up seeing because they advertised that it was free. But what they did not advertise was that it was free for a limited number of people and that then it was $50 per person. And I just did not feel like paying $50 to go pay more money to buy more food. But it was just a concert with a bunch of food trucks and I just you know, we're on a budget again. I know I'm really cheap in this video. So I decided a nice walk on the strip to try to find another tailgate was probably a better option. Honestly, most of the strip was a party itself with everyone dressed, repping their favorite team. Lots of yelling and cheering and photo ops around every corner. So I may have gotten carried away watching the fountain show at the Bellagio and almost didn't make it to the tailgate in time for kickoff, but I hopped back in an Uber and headed about 10 minutes off the strip. And this may not be what you expect. After trying to go to a rave a few weeks ago, I learned more about myself and so I decided that the tailgate I wanted to attend, it was called Sober Bowl, an event for people who just feel more comfortable not being around alcohol or want a very family-friendly environment. And the money raised goes towards helping foster children in the Nevada area. I have three adopted siblings who were in foster care for many years, so that's very special to me. And I'm also always worried about my safety traveling alone at big events, so this was the perfect event for me. It was in an amphitheater with only about 70 other people, and there were food trucks, and I just relaxed sitting in the grass. I even got to see the official flyover from the Super Bowl from the amphitheater. 
It was a surprisingly fun yet peaceful way to cheer on Taylor Swift's boyfriend to one of the greatest, most exhilarating endings to a sport match I've ever seen. I actually didn't end up staying at the amphitheater the whole time though because I don't actually like to be out after dark when I'm alone, which is one of my number one rules for safety. So I finished watching the game on a TikTok live stream from my bed in the van. And while that may not seem super glamorous, it definitely was not disappointing. The Chiefs winning the game with three seconds left on the clock in overtime, I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. <laughs>